Yeah, Vipin, I think you have to set up a separate call to do a little training on this and not do it during the call. Because it'll take, this is taking up time. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've already cleaned. So connect, connect with Natalia at some other point. Yeah, connect with Natalia at some other point and, and go over it. Yeah, yeah, all that is done. Now, now we are recording, we are done with that particular thing. So, uh, Natalia, I think uh, the key is, can you do share screen also, or you're not able to do that? Yes, I can share the screen, that I can see. Okay, please uh, share the screen and show the, um, uh, what do you call it? The antitrust policy, which should be in the link there in your meeting uh, agenda. Yeah, click on that link. Can you see, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so are you seeing now the antitrust uh, policy? Yeah. Okay, so so here, I mean, in, in the link, you can see the the policy that is promulgated uh, to to all the members participating on the Linux Foundation. So this is available for for you to you know to to, to read and, and and understand. And here here are all the details regarding to this policy. Beautiful. Now the other one, which is the. And then the code of conduct on the hyperledger. Yes, please. Basically, it says that we welcome everyone, right? Yes. Yeah, so, so here, everyone is welcome to to participate and engage in in any of of the groups that are available. And if um, people have other ideas, they can suggest um, other other groups to to work on. And basically, you have to treat everyone with respect, socialism, no bullying or um, disrespect. Everything else is allowed in free exchange of ideas. So, yes. So, if you want, you can. On. If you want, you can stop the screen sharing and then let's introduce ourselves and get on with the uh, with this uh, call. Um, so, so the purpose of the introductions is that everyone that is on the line knows who's who's on on the other on the other end of the line, and to get to know what are the topics of interest and experience of of the participants. Um, I can I can start myself. Um, I'm a dead. Stop the share. If you want. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, if you can, you can stop the share. Yeah, great. Okay. Thank you, Vipin. Um, so, so I will start myself with introduction. Um, I'm a debt capital markets uh, specialist, uh, basically working on the origination and syndication of uh, bond issuances and commercial paper and other type of of uh, debt origination, such as project finance. Um, I'm interested in the in in the hyperledger to get to know um, how the blockchain can help on the um, issuance and settlement processes. Um, I'm also here um, stating, well, um, assisting on the vice chair uh, role, and but uh, we discussed this, so this is a role that um, it's, it's open for a, 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 if anyone else is interested to take. But you are the current vice chair. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Claim it, own it. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's just that I'm still learning. It's okay, I, I'm, I'm we, are, we are all learning. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if you can go down the list, calling on people because they don't know when they should be. Sure. So, um, 
there's also uh, maybe Kelly. Yes, my Kelly, name is Kelly. Yeah, I'm here. I was um, taking notes. So um, my name is Kelly Cooper, and I actually work in higher ed in California, and I've been a volunteer with Hyperledger for about two years. Thank you. Um, Kirtik? Not sure I pronounced that right. Yeah, that's fine. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kirti. Um, I've, I have a background in management consulting. Um, I specialize in capital market operations. Um, now I'm more interested in uh, blockchain solution architecture. Uh, my areas of interest are um, asset digitization. So how to kind of build the entire um, product from scratch and, and scale it effectively and solve problems within the a capital market operations space, especially. Um, and I'm currently working, um, at least trying to find my way around uh, a couple of papers. So I'm deeply interested in regulations, data, as well as um, use cases. So I'm working with the rest of the team to try and uh, define this in the best possible way. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Sabdarshi? Yeah, hi, this is Saptarshi Chaudhary. I work for Paramount Software Solutions. Uh, we have been uh, engaged with the Hyperledger project uh, from April last year, but we actually started, uh, you know, participating in all the meetings in a more proactive way from April of this year. And uh, I'm looking forward to explore the capital markets, especially for the Asian market. Uh, the growth of uh, and the scope of blockchain to be applied in capital markets in Asia. Thank you. Uh, Karen? Hi, I'm Karen Otoni. I'm a director of ecosystem at Hyperledger and um, I'm uh, the Hyperledger point of contact for the special interest group. Thank you. Mani? Hello, uh, I'm uh, Mani Pillai from SwapTub. Um, we are working on a couple of areas in the capital markets regarding uh, blockchain and digital ledger technology. One is on the uh, ATC derivatives uh, side of things, where we work with a group of uh, uh, industry participants uh, under ISDA to uh, formulate and- Hey Manny, could you speak up a little louder? We're not really catching you. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, are you able to hear me better now? Yes, much much better. Thank you, Manny. Okay, okay no problem. Uh, so again, um, I'm uh, Manny Pillai from SwapSub. Uh, we are working on a couple of areas. One is with uh, uh, a ISDA or International Swap Dealers Association uh, uh, on the area of uh, common domain model. Uh, that that's for defining how the entire life cycle of derivatives and, and digitizing them so that this could be a standard way of representing them on a, any digital ledger technology. That's uh, that's on the industry side. Um, uh, also, we are working on digital assets where we are more interested in post-trade life cycle. Um, we are you know working with another vendor to actually solve the problem of um, uh, digital custody on the, in the on the institutional side, so uh, you know while we are working towards a solution on that. Uh, separately, I'm uh, also working. I've you know, contributed a bit on the standardization, uh, various uh, uh, protocols that are used in uh, data standards that are used to currently in capital markets. So you could see that as one of the uh, uh, items that we discussed today. Thank you, Manny. Isaac? Hi, everybody. Isaac Hunkel with Chain Yard. We're based in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina area. Uh, our company has been an active member of Hyperledger since its inception. We worked alongside IBM, specifically focusing on Fabric. We've done work with a variety of different platforms as well. And um, I guess the uh, last month was a big, big day for, or a big month for us. We launched our first commercial product, Trust Your Supplier, which is a cross-industry platform for supplier onboarding and lifecycle management. Um, and, and I'm joined this 
group. This is the first meeting I could attend because of the time is um, just to see what's going on in this space uh, uh, through Hyperledger. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it for us. We, we do focus on manufacturing, transportation, and logistics, but we've done cross-industry work over the last four years, including some work in the uh, finance and banking insurance industry. So just, again, just joining to participate and see how what's going on and see how we can help. Thank you. Excellent, Isaac, and uh, congratulations on, on this milestone. Um, and Vipin, leaving you for, for the end. Hi, um, I'm Vipin Baratan. Uh, I have been working with Hyperledger for a while, uh, ever since this, we started back in 2015 or so. Um, or was it early 2016? I, I don't remember. But um, anyway, um, I'm also the chair of the Identity Working Group and the chair of this organ this uh, group. Uh, but you know, we we um, welcome participation from everyone. And uh, Natalia is running this meeting, as we know. Um, I am also the founder of company called DLT.NYC. We do enterprise blockchain consulting, uh, mainly in the digital identity area, but also in capital markets because I have a lot of experience in capital markets, building infrastructure, uh, putting, um, putting <laughs> solutions into play um, in Hyperledger. Um, so um, the the uh, you know a couple of points here. One is um, Kelly was mentioning that uh, there was a call for papers, which we'll talk about later, and uh, also this trade finance uh, securitization paper, uh, which uh, I'm writing an article that I'm writing. Uh, the other thing I want to say is. Uh, since Stan is not going to be here because he sent me a private note, uh, maybe the use case uh, um, project can be addressed by Kirti because he has already put in a taxonomy there and he can discuss his taxonomy. That is my suggestion. So uh, without waiting further, I, I guess we should get on with the rest of the meeting. Okay, Bipin, shall we start first with the, with the, um, if there's any update or comments to, to the draft on the launch block that you started? Yes, uh, so I had put it out and I had also sent out an email about it to everyone. It is basically uh, going to be put in place in uh, during cybos and during that uh, week uh, the, during this month because it's uh, according to Karen it's a fintech month or rather according to Hyperledger I guess Karen told me that it's a fintech month and um, so the, uh, the the blog is there for everyone to review and um, for Hyperledger staff to edit Karen if you have any other comments this would be the occasion to bring it up. Do you want me to show the blog or? Um, I mean, what, what we need is essentially it to be sort of a draft to be finalized by the community and then it needs to go to our PR team for editing. So we're not gonna, it, it'll, it'll, it'll be, the final version will be edited off the wiki site. So we'll need a final version. I'll s s check back, let's see on the deadline that um, I got. For that and I'll let you know in a second. Okay, so but so I, I, I have that. a question. Go ahead, Natalia. Is it is it gonna be a, a static? I mean is it gonna be updated here on the hyperledger space? Um, so so you know 
the, the way that Ben is doing it is, is having it be a community effort to, to draft the blog. That's, that's one way. He, there are different ways that different stakes do it. Sometimes it's just the chair that drafts it. Um, so if you have any input that you would like to make to the blog, do it on the wiki. Um, and, um, and again, I'm going to get you that deadline. And then at, at the deadline, we will actually have to edit it off the wiki and it'll be finalized and published on the Hyperledger website and promoted in social media when it's launched. Yeah, I, I wrote most of it, meaning I would say 98% of it. Uh, Natalia did edit it yesterday, corrected some things, and also uh, made some other suggestions, which, I, which uh, she has incorporated. So if anyone else has any input, that would be great. So let's move on to the next topic, right, uh, Natalia? Or do you want to say anything more about it? Or anyone else, for that matter, say anything about the blog? Yeah, that was my, my, my only question. So if there are no further questions, we should move to the next topic, which is the Global Forum presentation. OK, the Global Forum presentation. So. There is a deadline for uh, giving a uh, presentation, uh, for uh, suggesting a presentation, and you have to be, um, you have to look at the CFP, the uh, um, call for papers, I suppose. Uh, as it's called, I will send out an email with the link to that. If anyone wants to uh, make a uh, presentation at the Global Forum, please uh, update the, uh, you know, give them the uh, 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 suggest, uh, um, proposal, sorry, that follows that CFP. I can also uh, try to find it and paste it up here. Uh, and according to Kelly's excellent suggestion, I might uh, try to turn that securitization article into a presentation because the article is going to be pretty short, around 800 words. I have the um, rough outline of the article already, um, and it has uh, gotten approval from the, uh, I think it's Trade Finance Global that is going to host the article. So that's, that's as far as the global forum goes. So Isaac or anyone else, uh, guys, you, if you have ideas, please don't hesitate. I'm sure Janiard already probably has some, some articles uh, or some presentations in the SGF, right? Yeah, and we have a variety of uh, artifacts and articles and all, but none are really capital markets focused, but happy to share you know, other things if, if there's interest. Yeah, I mean, what I mean is uh, for the Hyperledger Global Forum in, uh, I think it's in Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, next so for, March. Yeah, we, are, we've submitted for actually for four presentations and one product demo. So um, I don't know what we'll get picked for, but we're hoping to get selected for one or two things. Great. So anyone else in this group, uh, money from Swabs Hub, uh, Kirti, or Saptarshi, uh, if you guys, or Kelly, of course, and Natalia, anyone else has suggestions for this, it'd be great, uh, or proposals. Um, money? Um, not really, I mean, let me think about it, depending how the money share with, with the group. Yeah, the date is coming up soon, so. Anyway, now is the time to do the, I guess, Natalia, what is the, what is the next thing? Let me look. Yes, yeah, so um, maybe we should, we should speak about um, the status of the different projects that are currently open on, on this SAG. 
um, basically, I'm not sure if there's been any any added, so maybe it's worth that um, we, we discuss a bit the, the status of each of them. So the, the first one is the taxonomy um, that the proposer is uh, beeping. So I, I'm not sure here if there are, if there has been any any updates. I actually edited um, the the this map to to include um, the financials universe. Um, apart from that, I think it's pretty comprehensive. Um, my question now is, what do we do with this graph? Um, should we link um, or add more information on each of these uh, names? Uh, I think at the beginning someone suggested to, to include links to Wikipedia or other um, websites where we could see the explanation of the, of, of the taxonomy. But I'm not sure if this is something that you still want to do or you have any new ideas. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was my suggestion to to have links and pop-up tab tags so that the uh, document is alive rather than just being uh, dead, uh, meaning being static. Um, mm. So another way is to provide a, a short glosser, glossary of most of these things. Uh, because if you go to Wikipedia, that is a rabbit, uh, you know, that's a rabbit hole. Um, yeah. Each each one of those uh, each one of those bond types can be articles of a page or more. Um, so uh, maybe uh, create a glossary of this, um, which I will do, and then uh, link it to this. And the other idea was to link this to uh, use cases and to regulations and other uh, items so that it becomes a comprehensive sort of network for people who want to learn more about each particular kind of uh, bond or each particular kind of uh, product. Um, for example, the derivatives product could uh, link to the standards uh, that money is talking about uh, with uh, ISDA and all that work. But, you know, the point is we provide a taste of what it is before people uh, can go and do the research on their own. And in that case, we provide some links to those as well so that it becomes uh, a true uh, reflection of a web in the sense that we have our own little intranet of things and then that then links to the broader subject matter universe, uh, which is often the case when you do uh, research that you that you sink deeper and deeper into a specific topic. Uh, so that is the idea there. So the next, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm done with my, I have seen your uh, FIG, uh, FIG uh, extension. Uh, Natalia, can you say anything more about it? Yes, yeah, so, so basically um, in the classification. Sorry. Should I bring up the share screen on, on that? Uh, yeah, I, I, or I can, I can share it. Okay, please. Uh, can you see it? Yeah. So, so basically, uh, we have this box, uh, the main box, which is capital markets, and we are talking about 
bonds, equities, derivatives, and repos. So inside the bond world, we, we have the split of sovereign, municipal, and corporate and um, collateralized bonds. But inside, um, which is corporate, we were missing uh, financials. Normally, um, in the bond world, financials are separated from corporate because banks have um, a regulated industry and they have uh, particular products and a different capital structure when compared to, to a corporate. So I added the different bond types um, in, in, in the fixed sector, which um, go from the more subordinated, which is the 81, to the most senior nodes, which is the cover bond. And when I am speaking about subordinated and senior, I'm referring to, to the degree of, of subordination and I mean the, the ability for, for the bondholder to, to get repaid in case uh, things go wrong. So that's basically the full stack of the, um, of, of the bank capital structure. So is there a... Um are there explanations on on each of these like which we could add to the glossary like a t one t two i could i could provide those explain those those uh, the, the wording for that yeah and the, yeah and the protection uh, that you just talked about ranging from the most uh most senior to the one that is subordinated, uh, that structure is very common in capital markets when you do securitization. Um, and maybe we we'll have a section on that uh, particular aspect of things because I will be writing about it, the trade finance securitization, uh, basically the lower, uh, lower items in the stack are going to be uh, have higher risk and hence consequently higher yield uh, and the safer structures on top will have safer instruments on top will have um, are going to have lower yield so the um, correlation of yield to the risk of the bond is a very important concept. The problem is the pricing of these bonds cannot or may not take into account the risk, which is what happened in the last crisis with respect to subprime mortgages, because even though the yield was high, the uh, risk was not um, properly calculated, so the price and the yield of the bonds were not um, correlated with the high high risk of those bonds. Uh, and this is a common theme. And maybe uh, if you work in the field, uh, um, Natalia. Maybe you can go a one level slightly deeper into this right now for about three or four minutes. Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the, the FIG space in any case is uh, very, very specialized and people like to, since there is regulation um, involved, when you compare it to a corporate, there is a lot of buzzwords that everyone keeps saying and it's difficult to understand. So, so basically, the regulation in the banking industry is constantly evolving precisely because regulators see the need of more transparency, but also at the same time to make uh, the system safer. So they require banks to hold more capital so that in case of, um, you, you know, when uh, problems start arising, banks are more capitalized and they are stronger to, 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 
to, to survive, basically, without the, the help of, of governments, which is the main issue here, because in the past crisis in 2008, what happened is um, uh, some banks had to be rescued with uh, public money. So this is uh, what we are trying to, to avoid uh, since then. Um, the, the specific of each of the instruments, um, to, to, again, I think it's very specific. I think it's worth uh, maybe if you are interested to go to the glossary once it's, it's, it's ready. Um, but basically these instruments, just for you to know, are designed so they cannot be bought by individuals. So normally the, the, the minimum denomination uh, or the minimum amount you, you, you can buy of each of these bonds is uh, depending on of, of the bond 100k or 200k. So this is one of the measures to, to, to avoid normal people to, to buy the, these instruments because they carry a uh, risk. So. I could I could I could continue speaking with uh, about this, but I think it's too specific. So um, I'm not sure it's 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 worthwhile. Um, yeah, I mean, it, yes, about the financials. Uh, you, but what we want to draw out here is uh, the principles. That principle holds across uh, all instruments in a certain sense because. For example, stocks are not protected in case of a uh, default or a, uh, or, uh, or a bankruptcy. Um, different levels of protection exist. Uh, sometimes the, uh, so, so bonds are, uh, are more protected than uh, stocks. Um, so there is no uh, floor on the price of stock. There is no floor. In, there is, you know, you are basically, uh, you're basically on the in the back of the line. Yes. Yeah, so here, one important aspect of the subordinated bonds is that the 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 main difference between well, one of the main difference between stocks and, and, and bonds apart from, from the ownership is that as a bondholder you expect to get repaid your principal at the end of the period um, and some of these bonds um, the, 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 the chance of, of, of not getting repaid because um, the, the, the nominal can be bailed in it's significant. Yes, so how does this relate in our sense to our, uh, to the DLTs? So in the end, you know, how can we relate all of this structure, the, the ways in this product is set up to the actual solutions that we are building, right? And there are multiple avenues through which uh, this kind of, uh, this kind of, uh, risk calculations are done, and that's our, uh, you know, some of our main concerns here. So we are not just looking at these bonds uh, out of context. We are not just saying, oh, these are the different kinds of bonds, and we are not, you know, we are not going to dwell on just that. Well, I think I think apart from that, you, you are right. But also, one one of the things that DLT can help with uh, with these bonds is um, on the distribution aspects of the bonds in the syndication process. Because we, with with blockchain, it's it's it, it's got, I think the using of the use of these technologies um, can enable uh, more transparency um, with regards to the allocation processes. And knowing um, the, the holders and, and, and avoid maybe um, some people to, to, to get this these bonds in the first place. So the, the, there's there's more control around who is holding each of the bonds. Yes. So 
the benefits are many, including that metadata, which uh, points to fairness, and also, of course, the, uh, you know, the, the, the whole idea around um, who's holding the bond becomes important uh, when, when defaults happen or some, you know, or even in the beginning when benefiting the most uh, distributions. Um, so it's a, it's a vast universe out there about, you know, the benefits of blockchain, um, but it can also cause, uh, it, it can also be an obstacle in the sense that some people do not want this information to be public and more transparent. So maybe it also points to Kelly's uh, obstacle, you know, obstacle to the adoption of blockchain technology. Yeah, Vipin, I think that's true across a lot of different se segments, not just the capital markets, <laughs> part of the uphill battle. Yeah, sure, but capital markets are a very important segment in financials. Um, you know, and highly regulated, some, sometimes in the wrong way, so there is also that. Um, yeah, you're right that, you know, it uh, affects the prices of everything, right? I mean, insurance, um, you know, <coughs> healthcare, whatever. Well, all of these things are constructed in an unfair way sometimes because they look at the wrong, uh, wrong things that made the risk profile. Anyway. Okay, uh, so move on to, to, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I was just going to suggest to move to the, to the next, um, the next project about the standards. Sounds good. Um, Natalia, can you, uh, can you share the screen uh, on the standards? Yeah, I'm on it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, uh, Wipin and I had earlier put together a kind of a rough uh, draft outline of what we want to accomplish the standards. So, uh, I took that outline and, uh, and you know, tried to address uh, the most uh, prevalent standards that are the fixed XML that's, you know, the most used in industry. Um, and then on the derivative side, FTML. Uh, I, I, if you just if you scroll further down, you would see a PML and then followed by uh, is that common domain model, which is an emerging new standard that covers uh, multiple asset classes. Uh, so I try to cover as much as possible, to give an outline as uh, uh, indicated, we've given pointers uh, from here to the more uh, the in specific industry uh, standard bodies or uh, the other websites that have more details. Uh, but this is just a, you know, a start to give a collection of information about uh, the various standards that are predominantly being used. Uh, the one thing I've not uh, looked into is the ISO 20022. I, I don't have much of experience on that. Um, so that's an area we would like to cover. Uh, if there's interest on other standards, I'm more than happy to look into. Uh, or if you want to expand further on it, also we can, uh, we can definitely look further into it. I think uh, the ISO 20022 is quite important here because, uh, for example, if you if you go to the ASX project, uh, chess replacement by Dymo idea, right? You'll see that a lot of the uh, they, they point to ISO 20022, but that is a data interchange standard, but then finally, they also point back to certain uh, other uh, standards, like for example, uh, legal entity identifier, LEI, 
uh, and uh, GLEIF, you know, the Global Legal Identity, uh, Legal Entity Identity Foundation, quite a mouthful there, but uh, basically that, uh, I mean, I don't know whether Isaac, is your, uh, that's your uh, project or product, which is the um, Know Your Supplier product. Does it have any uh, integration with LEI? Somebody's got a, you should go on mute if you have, if you're not speaking, please. Um, with, and I apologize, when you say LEI, can you explain that? Legal Entity Identifier, which is a standard promulgated by the global GLEIF. Basically, that GLEIF is a standard that has been uh, suggested for legal entities. And it contains, uh, you know, lots of information uh, and that is slowly becoming a, um, a global standard because it, it uh, provides for nested structures, for agreement with uh, local uh, regulations, and for uh, discovering beneficial ownership. So uh, integration to that would be very key in uh, creating a um, product like Know Your Supplier, because one of the sources of information about the supplier would be a something like LEI. Um, I'd have, I, and I don't work on that every day, but um, I'd have to say no, we, that's not a standard that's adopted. We, ha we have, uh, for the launch, we've depended heavily on Dun & Bradstreet for verification of a lot of the entities. And, and you, you know, that's just something they do today. So we're doing that through APIs. And there's some other, other third party verifiers who are part of the ecosystem for providing uh, financial ratings. Uh, we're talking to somebody about providing cybersecurity rating. Um, uh, EcoVadis is providing, um, if you will, um, sustainability ratings and all. Just things that are important to uh, big corporations when they're onboarding suppliers. But that's not one of them. I, I've taken a note here to, to look at that though. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually uh, going to write a um, Rust-based uh, system, a library to um, interface with that standard, which is uh, available as a HTTPS, uh, like a, a, you know, REST, uh, API and uh, contributed to possibly to grid or one of its sub, sub, sub projects because I believe that that is very important. There exists already exists some Python uh, code, you know, libraries to do this. But the key thing is it is it is a global standard, so it's not just confined to a specific country. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure that even, uh, you know, the legal regulations in the United States uh, are also covered by this standard. Uh, so, I mean, I can, you know, we can talk about this off chain, off, you know, we can talk about this later, but let's go on with the rest of the stuff unless you have something more to say on this topic the only other thing i was going to say was yeah when the identifier itself for the supply for the entities this uh both the buyers and suppliers are are, are using a w3c standard for the digital identity um that's been proposed and uh, to that to that body I, I don't know if it's been accepted yet or not but there's was a write-up on it but it's it did specification yeah, the did the did yeah. stuff is very important, uh, but in the end, the kind of info it's more on a schema side, meaning yeah. what is available, right? 
Yeah, I, I understand that. And I, I'm, well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to those guys and see what, what they're doing on that side. I, I'm very interested in what you guys are doing because of my other involvement with the identity uh, working group. But yep. the, the key is that many of the uh, risks identified in the capital markets uh, uh, evolve around KYC AML, which in the end, uh, you know, in the end points to all this. So uh, things are related uh, more than we realize. In fact, when I'm researching the trade fund paper, I see that the, a lot of the uh, a lot of the risk is connected to um, KYC AML. Yeah, and trade finance is an area we've definitely done a lot of research and you know discussions on because it's it is such an part integral part of the supply chain in terms of helping companies you know extend their reach and and capitalize their 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 basically their product development and all or product creation so um it's a good good overlap with where we do focus um i i can i i'm, I'm looking at this the uh agenda the the paper that you had proposed that's not listed as a project um, not, per, per, not, per yet. Se? not yet okay because we just started our work on it this week okay i got it thank you but that is you oh. know it's actually an article to be put into um trade finance local uh vipin i had just one quick query uh, the uh, submission that we need to make for September 27th, is it a full proposal or just a concept we need to share right now and maybe we can work out later and get it done completed? Because the event is in March, after six months. Yeah, the CFP uh, process lays it out, so I'm going to send a uh, link to the CFP. I added a link into the agenda and you're correct. It's only the proposal. It's not a completed, uh, ready-to-go project or paper. Yeah, all you need is the abstract. You don't need the presentation until one week before the actual presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, because I see that you have mentioned here trade finance securitization. And last week, uh, just a steering committee report from the Government of India released a 150-page document in which they have strongly emphasized on trade finance and other applications of blockchain. So I was just going through that, maybe I can share with the group, uh, because I feel there are some uh, coherence to what we are trying to achieve from it. Overall in Asia itself. Please do, um, because we will work, continue working on this. This is my, uh, you know, somebody's, I think um, I just created this 37 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> so, huh. This uh, this was the proposal that I had given to for the paper, but this can go, uh, you know, further in our group because there are all kinds of uh, dimensions to this. Anyway, let's you know maybe we should move on to the next topic if uh, Natalia agrees. So the next project is about the use cases. Um, Stan created uh, the, this first draft um, of the use cases. Um, I, I, I wrote in, in red a, a question that I had when I was looking at the, at the split of capital markets. Um, maybe my suggestion um, is does it make sense to to, to separate uh, between primary and and secondary market? Because some some of the of the products, um, I mean the the post trade uh, would be part of the primary market, but then um, all the other activities on the secondary market um, are actually huge. 
So, so for instance, um, when when you see this the, the graph, the map um, inside capital markets, I've written here bond origination issuance, which would be uh, the primary market when when you create uh, the security, and then all the other topics which I see the the trading and the, and the post trade. All this is the secondary market. Um, however, I have a question, and I'm not sure um, that the OTC products, the over-the-counter products, would go on the primary market or on the secondary market. I I'm just saying this in sake of of, of clarity because um, there are a lot of boxes, and 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 maybe it's easier to, to separate the different uh, streams. I, I'm not sure if you have a view about this. Could be, uh, since you created this, uh, could you comment? Uh, well, uh, f first and foremost, uh, what I've done in form of adding value is uh, taken what Stan created and I've just converted that into the mind map, um, but uh, to answer uh, Natalia's question, I completely agree that there should be um, a proper primary market and secondary market division. But in order for us to do that, um, I'm not sure how we'll be able to clearly demarcate that. So I'll need a bit of help over here. So if we can do this uh, in a proper way, then I, I could go ahead and like define the taxonomy in a more accurate way and then take it forward from there on. Um, what, what, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna think about it okay and maybe uh, contact you uh, offline with yeah. with a proposal yeah and then and then we can we can take it from there yeah sounds good sounds good uh, Whipin, uh this is a question for you so I'm, I'm happy to kind of contribute and um, uh, take this forward um, I'm just trying to kind of put work my way through this. So um, for the first few weeks, I've been silently observing as to what's been happening in the forum. Now that I vaguely understand how we're structuring projects and everything, I'll, I'll try and do my best to kind of fit in as much as I can. Uh, I think one of the challenges is that uh, this this way of working is really new for me. I've never done this before. so. It's going to take uh, a bit of time for me to get used to it and, and start being able to contribute actively within these sessions. Yeah, I mean, on a two week scheduled call, um, we cannot get much done. Um, so it is between the calls that work can be done in a very uh, sort of ad hoc manner. If, if I may say, without a schedule, because everybody is free at different yeah. times, everybody's around the world. Uh, the other thing I just heard from Natalia, which I agree with, is that um, there are too many boxes, even in the first taxonomy. So maybe the thing to do is uh, create, uh, you know, levels or hierarchies of these structures. Makes so sense. That so that we can have a primary connections uh, only in the first um, in the first mind map and then each one of those sections will have their own little sec little mind map so that yeah. you don't get overwhelmed by the uh, detail okay okay i mean that, that's my feeling after now but what is what is uh, everybody's what is everybody think of this? Uh, the only thing that I would like to comment on is that is uh, you know the, the taxonomy is more towards I guess more of a product classification here, um, yeah. not necessarily a market structure. Whether it is a primary market or a secondary market, if you want to address that, we might have this address it separately, uh, because it all depends on you know how you look at a primary market or secondary or tertiary market. It all depends from market to market. How you treat it in bonds or derivatives is much different. So I think we should not mix those two things together here. The focus is here is about 
uh, outlining uh, products and uh, classification of products in that we should stick to and then have a separate area to discuss more on primary versus secondary uh, market. Okay. That, that, that's my thought on this. I agree, uh, Mani. So uh, should we, I mean, I? Kelly's, Kelly's finished taking the notes. We should thank her for that. And um, I guess we are almost coming to the end of the thing. We have come to the end. Natalia, if you have any closing comments. Jamie or Jamie Um. Well, basically, you know, there, there are still things, I mean, we, we have different um, work streams open. I see we're seeing, pre, I mean, progress. There's uh, different people, um, also myself, that uh, we are new, newbies to, 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 to this, um, the hyperledger and the, the, form, the, the way of working and the, war, the way of editing uh, the documents. Um, e e even in my case, like uh, sometimes I'm not sure how to how to do the, the things on, on the graphs, but this is a learning process, I guess. Uh, so I'm happy to see I'm not the only one and that um, we are all welcome to, to participate and, and contribute um, in the best way we can. So I would encourage everyone to, to continue working and, and on, on the different projects. Basically, everyone is learning. Uh, we are uh, questioning the very uh, basis of SIGs and working groups and what the work product should be. Uh, the whole of hyperledger, uh, you know, they, meaning, I mean, not only code, but everything else is important as well. So that's, that's the key uh, takeaway. And how do we collaborate? Uh, you know, collaborate effectively to produce something that people want to read or visit and uh, will provide value to the others. That's the key. Anyway, I guess uh, we are at time. Yeah, we are at time. I, I see there there was also a new a new topic about tokenization and digital currency. Um, we have surpassed time, so um, I think maybe we can we can leave this topic for our next meeting. If you all agree. Yeah, maybe we should start discussing it in random order because always the first few topics get discussed and the ones in the end do not get the time they deserve. Yeah, I agree. I, I, in any case, I will put it on the first uh, first item for next agenda. Thank you. I'll post uh, I'll post uh, audio and other links, video links. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Lippin, how do you see it going forward with that paper then? The trade finance. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, what's going to happen is that I have to produce it in the next couple of days. Uh, so it will be a very brief paper, 800 words or so. Right. Uh, but we continue to work on this and I will propose that as a talk for the HGF, right? Okay. And then we can also include uh, your input into it here uh, on the on the wiki, and I would also like to talk to you about your global you know your supplier product if if you want to want, want me to. Yeah, yeah, happy to talk about that. I just I, I just would like you know to to see what you're going to write about and and potentially uh, contribute if there's any opportunity. Yeah. Do you did you see the link that? I mean, uh, yes. I do have the link to the, the draft notes. Yeah, and also the link to the uh, to the proposed to the proposed paper. I mean the 
I'm getting I'm getting all the, the outline. The outline. The 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 thesis is you know very simple. In fact, it will go into details on uh, what Natalia was talking about. Also, the structures, um, you know, for example, the structure of the uh, of the as bonds. Uh, what has what has been done in trade finance so far is the creation of the SPV, special purpose vehicle, and uh, uh, and isolate this uh, particular entity and uh, securitize the trade finance through that entity uh, for two things. One is because it's low duration, they created some kind of a revolving facility. Uh, two is, uh, you know, like structure it so that there is a mezzanine tranche and, uh, uh, you know, like a higher risk tranche or whatever. And those are then sold separately to different institutions. I'm very familiar with the, the way in which these things are done because I, I worked a lot with credit markets, including mortgages, uh, during the crisis and after the crisis. So, so, you know, what we need are tools, basically, in order to do the securitization. Yeah, I think, and, and I'll drop, <laughs> we'll take this offline as a, I, I think what I've seen is just getting the banks to support these new platforms has been the, the, the biggest problem on their success. It seems like there's lots of ideas out there to put these new ways of doing business together, but getting the banks to participate and make them successful has been the challenge. All right, I'll talk to you offline on that. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot. I'm going to end the meeting. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.